Hello everyone, today we're going to see how easily the bisection method can be solved using a table. Let's first talk about the theory. Here this graph represents the bisection method. So, we start with two point, A and B in a way that our root will lie in that range. The bigger red dot is the root of the function. We need to update A and B in a way that A, B and mean value of A and B becomes equal. Thus, we get the root of the function. We will discuss it more later. Here is our question, find the real root of an equation function of x equals x cubed minus x minus 11, by the bisection method. To solve this, we need to find two successive points, A and B, such that one of them gives a positive and another one gives a negative value of the function. In this table, we started with 0, and upon continuing to 3, we get one positive value for 3 and 3 negative values. But, 2 is successive to 3. So, we take 2 and 3 thus our root lies between 2 and 3. Now you can ask what happens if we take 0 and 3 or 1 and 3. Well, you can, but you will need to iterate a lot. You will see in a moment what I'm talking about. Next, we create a table to make our life easier. Here count will show how many times we iterated before to get the root. Now this two column A and B, we just solved from the previous step. C is the middle point of A and B. And for the function of A, function of B, and function of C, we put A, B and C respectively in our function that is x cubed minus x minus 11 in this example. Now the last column is for accuracy representing the difference between B, and A. To complete the next row, we need to carefully observe some things first from its previous row. Let's look at the sign of function of A, function of B, and function of C whose sign is the same as the function of C. Function of B, right? Both are positive while function of A is negative. So, we update the value of B with C from the previous row. And the value of A, will be the same as it was in the previous row. Okay. Let's look at another row. You can see the function of A is negative and the function of C is also negative. So, we need to update the value of A with the value of C. And the value of B, remains unchanged. This is how you complete the rest of the table. Now, how do we know when to stop the iteration? What is our root? Well, when A, B, and c become equal or the function of c becomes zero that's the root, but that will take a lot of iteration. In your exam, the accuracy will be mentioned or you will be asked to write the root to three or four decimal places. If nothing is mentioned, you can stop after the first three or four decimal places of a, b, and c matches. In that case, you can write, c as the root of your equation. Here, after 13 iterations we have an accuracy of 0.00024 and the first three decimal places of A, B, and C is 0.373. So, you can say the root is 2.3736. Let me show you couple more iterations. C, after 49 iterations the function of C becomes 0 and A, B, and C are the same. So, the root becomes 2.3736498 as we already got after 13 iterations 2.3736. Hope you get the idea. If that helps you in any way, please like, share, and subscribe. This will help me a lot. Thank you for watching.